and welcome back to The Lockup, presented by Comics Remixed, episode 10. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams. Joining me is my co-host, yawning like always. I'm not yawning, I'm in shock. I'm reading one of these results. Oh, really? That looks like a yawn. No, I was like... <gasps> okay. Wow. So introduce yourself and... What's Junior your Ruiz. <laughs> that was Junior Ruiz. That was so bland. Yeah, well, that's who I am. You, but you're more excitable, usually. Because, like, I'm shocked right now. You're I'm shocked? In, I'm in a state of shock. Uh, is it to deal with Money in the Bank? Yes. Is it to deal with the opening match of Money in the Bank? Yes. <laughs> awesome, because that's our lead-in for this week's show. Money in the Bank, let's get it on, son. Well, we've got to note that Chris Bookout is the only one that chose this person to win out of the three of us. And he said if this guy won, he was going to come back on the show and just give us hell about it. In the that's kickoff true. match... Our truth defeated King Barrett. Should we call him? He's at Graham Crackers right now. You oh. know what? Yeah, let's 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 do that. Let's do it live. All right, hold on. So we are phoning up the book. Let's not tell him his name. Okay. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, um, so remember last week when you were on the lockup and uh, you were the only one that chose our truth to defeat King Barrett? Yeah. And you said that if our truth won, you had to come back on the show. Yeah. You got to come back on the show. <laughs> I can't today. Well, yeah, not today, but. Oh. Yeah, he. Uh, so he did win. Yeah, he actually won. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, like the shocker of the century, man. <laughs> oh man, I didn't even believe it when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happened. So there you go. That's awesome. Guys on one episode and he already gets right? the first uh, the first right. pick correct. Making us look like <laughs> crap, man. Uh, yeah. I'll come on next week to, to make my whatever to accept my congratulations from you guys. <laughs> and y'all tell me how genius I am. Hey wait, didn't Junior tell me that I could start doing the lockup if if I was right on the R truth thing? No. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember that. Well, you remember wrong, Hick, because I never said that. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember that. Maybe that's something uh, you guys talked about in your adventures in toy hunting yesterday, but I don't, I don't recall no, that. It was on the lockup before we got edited. No, it might even still be after it was edited. No, I don't remember it. To it. I yeah, don't I don't, remember. I don't do a whole lot of editing outside of just putting beeps in, really. Yeah, so yeah, I listen to it at the very end of it. All right, we'll check that out. Yeah. <laughs> our anyway. our co co host, the book. <laughs> Nothing, man. Go back to buying comics. <laughs> uh, I'm not even there yet. I'm, we were doing a port, or, uh, Father's Day thing for with Brittany's family. Gotcha. All right, man. All right, man. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. 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 Nice. So he, if he listens to this tomorrow, he's, he's gonna be like, "Hey, to. that's great." But yeah, <laughs> friggin' book out, man. Yeah. Calling us on the the arch. Really, room. like, you know. This was, like, shocking, honestly. And obviously you were shocked because of the look on your face. Why? Okay. And, and I think we talked about this last episode. Why would you bring back a pay-per-view? Not even a pay-per-view. Why would you bring back an event, i.e. King of the Ring, to give a guy a push just to have him defeated by our truth at the next pay-per-view? Yeah, I don't know. Like, what? I don't know. King of the Ring has no, in way, way in, in, in any way, shape, or form, does it have any meaning anymore. Yeah. Uh, it uh, used to really not. mean something. I mean, it was the tournament. You knew you were the King of the Ring. Right. Eventually, you would become the workhorse and becoming the Intercontinental Champion when it meant something. Stone and Cold Steve Austin. You know, but now it's just like, whatever. Right. It's not even important enough to give it a build it's like oh next week we're just gonna do king of the ring and these are the guys that are in it did booker kill it when he was king king booker you know what i give him credit for actually making it one of the more memorable king runs yeah because he took the ball and he ran with it no absolutely you know it's like it's whatever and he's honestly i bring that up and i know i just kind of poo-pooed him a little bit there but honestly he is one of the only really memorable King of the Ring runs that I can think of. Yeah. 
outside of... I mean, you can of, name other people yeah, who I can, were... Yeah, people who've won it. But, like, actually... Right, embraced it. Yeah. Like, Scepter and the Crown and the yeah, and whole, it, I, whole, I whole deal. King Sheamus, when he did it for a little while, he came out with the, uh, the Scepter and he had... Uh, well, his was more like the stick. And he had the green cape, remember that? And he had the crown, the Irish crown or whatever it was. But, but uh, moving on. So, seriously. yeah, our truth defeated King Barrett in the kickoff match. And then we um, got a little bit of a tribute, too, to Dusty. Yeah. Which was really nice. I They did good. Yeah. Now, we had talked about it would be weird if they did not showcase his sons mm-hmm. as being, and they weren't there. Right. Right. Which I can only assume means that they were obviously grieving with their family. Yeah. I mean, which makes sense. I mean, if you were a wrestler, obviously. and You know, I thought it was cool in watching that tribute video, how they included the Maria Menudos uh, when she was doing the Hard Times promo to Dusty from the Hall of Fame ceremony this yeah. last year. I thought that was really cool. And watching that, she's got to feel some sort of honor in that, you know. So that was, that was really cool. It was good stuff. Uh, moving on, the uh, the official first match of the event, uh, it was actually the Money in the Bank contract ladder match. Before we even get to who won this, why in the hell would you make the first match of the pay-per-view Money in the Bank the Money in the Bank match? I guess to try to get the crowd hyped up. You know, you put a big match first, because then you get a couple smaller matches, and then you get... But it's the pay-per-view match. Yeah. I mean, shouldn't that have been, like, the co-main event? Like, the yeah. uh, the match leading then, up to the main but event? But then two ladder matches in a row? You know? Yeah. 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 I, I, I figured they, they wanted to start out strong. Okay, so if I'm not... Strong and exciting. If I'm not mistaken, in our breakdown of this, we said... Your last two, your two choices were Roman Reigns or Randy Orton. Right. Mine was Roman Reigns, and then you were like hinting towards you wanted Neville to get it as well. Mine was Roman Reigns, and I said Kofi. But we were all wrong in the fact that Sheamus actually came out with that. Right. The one guy, the one guy on this list, well, outside of Kane, that we were vehemently like concrete, they're not giving it to Sheamus. Yeah. I was shocked when you sent me that message and said Sheamus won the money in the bank. And yeah. then I had to watch the pay for you. You and me both. I was just like, really? So you had had some things I... But it I, was between um, Sheamus and Neville were the last two, wasn't it? No? In my opinion, that match was going to go how we predicted until they threw us the curveball that was Bray Wyatt. That's right. That's right. Yep, totally forgot about that. You know, I really felt like this was the opportunity for them to continue with their push of Roman Reigns but it clearly seems like to me that the WWE has heard the fans outcry of how they don't want him anywhere near main event status right now and they must be embracing it. They obviously have plans at some point in time for Roman Reigns to be the guy Yeah. but clearly they want the fans to be ready for him to be the guy. They want the fans to embrace him. Yeah. So um there was original plans for Sheamus. Uh, well, Dave Meltzer from uh, the Wrestling Was Ever newsletter uh, stated that WWE, WWE originally planned to have Sheamus win the Money in the Bank last year, uh, but because of other things like storyline changes and injuries and all that stuff, uh, he uh, it didn't happen. So now he's in line for a title run. Uh, and uh, here here's some more. So the original plans from Sheamus is according to Dave Meltzer says, originally Sheamus was to turn heel and faced Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania last year, but when Punk left and the fact the crowds were killing Batista, Bryan's creative changed and Sheamus was left out. Then Sheamus was going to win the briefcase at Money in the Bank, but when Bryan got hurt and Money in the Bank became for the vacant title, it changed again. The champion was chosen based on who would be the best person to drop the title to Lesnar. The feeling at the point was that they should go with the biggest marquee star, Cena, as champion. Where Rollins got the nod, and look at how that turned out, is that at first they were only going to do one Money in the Bank match, only for the title. When the decision was made to do a second one, with the title shot at stake, Sheamus had already been slotted in the first one and announced that they didn't want to change it. So future plans for Sheamus is uh, the win means Sheamus is likely to take the title over sometime next year from whatever babyface beats Rollins for the title. Heading 
headlining with a new name in the mix is a good idea, but Seamus, even with the change in look, is far from being a new name. I'm not sure that Seamus is thought of by fans at the guy, at the level of a guy who at this point should win the title or even headline a pay-per-view singles match. I would have to agree with that. I was shocked that they gave it to him because I feel like that Seamus... I, I didn't see him in the title picture whatsoever. Here's my thing from taken away from that is the line that says Seamus is likely to take the title sometime over the next year from whatever baby face beats Rollins for the title. So does that mean that Lesnar will not defeat Rollins? Does that mean that Lesnar will defeat Rollins and become a baby face but then lose it to Seamus? Where does Lesnar fit into all this? That's a good question. And that's something we speculated on um, last week. When we talked about, I mean, we knew that Lesnar was primed for a comeback, but we also had speculated that Lesnar's comeback would not happen and his return match would not happen until around Money or SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be at Battle Round. And he's going to face, obviously, I mean, spoiler, even though we'll talk about it later, Seth Rollins. Like, did that not shock you a little bit? Did you even know that, or is that news to you? I knew that, but yeah, I was... Because that was something expect, that came out of Raw Monday. Yeah, I didn't expect Lesnar to come back this soon, nor did I expect him to have a match at Battleground, of all places. Yeah, I figured no. they would have held off till SummerSlam. I'd have thought so, too. But I mean, so, obviously... Okay, obviously Rollins isn't a babyface. <laughs> Lesnar's definitely not a babyface. You could hardly call him a face. He has gotten more... Um, in tune with the fans, though. I feel like the lead-up to WrestleMania, a lot of supporters came out of the woodwork for for, for Lesnar. I know I was one. I, I know I, I pretty much despised Lesnar up to that point. Okay. Um, I feel like he's turned a corner with me, personally. Uh, he seems to be a little more about the business than I believed him to be. Mm -hmm. And I think it had to be that maybe that ESPN interview that he did when he announced he was staying with uh, WWE. They I noticed did a lot. ever since then it's been a little bit different. His attitude has been, at least on camera, more for the business. Right. Like you don't catch him. He hasn't been caught yet saying anything negative against the business. Mm -hmm. Unlike when he originally left and went to the UFC. Which then again, he could have just been negative about the business just to, you know, mm -hmm. I, I feel like, I feel like Vince is trying to soften the, the relationship between UFC and WWE, where I feel like Dana White just hates WWE. <laughs> and maybe that was Dana White saying, okay, just go and just, you know, trash talk him. Yeah. But who knows? But yeah. China. Oh, never mind. Never mind. We're still doing money in the bank. I'm sorry. We got off subject there. That uh, that was like mind blowing, Sheamus. Yeah, it's crazy. So next up, the Divas Championship match: Nikki Bella versus Paige. We were both right on that. We figured Nikki was going to retain because if we both agreed that if on two things, one, if Paige got it, it would be on a bigger stage, mm -hmm. which I'm guessing SummerSlam. The other thing we agreed on, well, you brought it up and I agreed with you, was that there it looks like they're pushing Nikki Bella to have this Divas legacy to shadow or excuse me so AJ's is like left back in right. the dust kind of so yeah, that, that's clearly clearly what's going on mm -hmm. and you still got more you got some failed twin magic in that match which I still own. it was funny because I mean they did the twin magic Brie comes in pins pins Paige in a, a roll up Paige reverses the roll up and gets the pin and they award her the the match, but then Bree's like, oh, no, no, and then she's like, dude, literally, pulling stuffing out of her bra. Nice. And all like, oh, this, I'm, I'm me, not Nikki. <laughs> so they had to keep the match going. Nah. Which I felt like that should have been called, like, a DQ. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I would have given Paige the match anyway. Yeah. Obviously, Nikki would have retained. Yeah, even though there wouldn't have been a title. That, yeah. that would have set up another re a reason for another rematch. Absolutely. As opposed to just trying to piece together a story of why. Mm -hmm. um, next up, we had the IC Championship match, Big Show and Ryback. Did the match, that match didn't even happen. No, it was, uh, it was a Big like Show won by disqualification. Like, automatically, before the match even really got going, the Miz came out. Yeah. 
and interrupted things. So it was hardly a match. Yeah. And I kind of wonder if that wasn't like a time constraint thing. Like if they hadn't wasted too much time, and they're like, okay, we're just gonna, you know, this is kind of what we're gonna do. We just go. Do you there think they would earlier. they would bump it because of the people involved, or they'd bump it because it was? Like, I don't see them bumping a match like that for time constraints because it's the IC title. I you think because I mean? of the people involved. Like we said last week, what was the point of giving Big Show the shot at the title? Yeah. It was really a, it was a pointless move. One of the matches of the night that uh, probably the best, John Cena versus Kevin Owens. Man, like... We were so gung-ho like Owens all the way. And they well, it to, it, Cena. to me, like we said last week, and you, we both agreed, it only made sense that when, when you're giving someone a big push... It only makes sense to have them win consecutively. Yeah. And to come in to his second big match against Cena and lose just didn't make sense. But it was a hell of a match. But, I mean, the results from that show last the, the, the next night on Monday Night Raw. And if anything, it's, you know, Kevin Owens now more fired up. And he's like, you know what, I want your belt now. Yeah, yeah, and we discussed that, that it would be a win, that we, we thought it would be a, K, a KO win, mm-hmm. and then that would push for the title. But instead, it gives them a loss, which then creates a whole reason for them to fight again and for the title to be on the line. Yeah. Which means, obviously, Kevin Owens is probably going to drop that belt to Finn Balor. Oh, yeah. Um, my, my happiness that Kevin Owens actually lost was the next night on Raw, Kevin Owens powerbombing Machine Gun Kelly off the stage. Right there, brother. High five. That First was awesome. All, who cares about MGK? Right? Who the F is Machine Gun Kelly, and why the F should I care? First of all, look at you. Dude, you do not scare me. Whatsoever. You're not a gangster. Don't try to look right? like one. Second of all, what, like, dude, really, you, your name is Machine Gun like, I, I hear a guy named Machine Gun Kelly, I'm thinking straight up old school gangster, or I'm thinking some guy that can bench press a Honda. <laughs> you know? Right? Something a little more intimidating than a guy that looks like he's about 110 pounds when he's soaking wet. And then, like, for him to sit there and shove Kevin Owens and try to walk off like he's a, like a legit gangster, like, dude, you really... I mean, yeah, of course, it's, you know, it's predetermined. And right. But... Come on, dude. The reality of what you're seeing. Like, you expect me to believe he's going to be able to, like, shove Kevin Owens and walk away unscathed? And if it was really anything, why didn't his boys jump on Kevin Owens? It's like, the most believable thing I have seen on Monday Night Raw that had to do with a celebrity was Mike Tyson, Stone Cold. When, as soon as Stone Cold flipped on the bird and Tyson shoved him, everyone around got involved. And it looked like a legit brawl. What about when Mayweather punched Big Show in the nose? I forgot about that. Yeah, that, that too. was probably more legit. Well, yeah, I mean, because he really broke his nose, right? I would have just I man, if I was that. Big it's Show, I was dude. I trying to think about Mayweather. I was talking about him in the car yesterday too. Did you hear that jerk? What he said about his forty-eight no record? No. He would put it on the line this September if De La Hoya agrees to come out of retirement and fight him. Why is De La Hoya going to do that? First of all, money. I mean, I guess no. Just no, because they fought once already. Mayweather got him. There's no reason for De La Hoya to come out. One, two. Mayweather saying, "Oh, it has to be in September." So what? You're giving the guy three months to come out of retirement and train against you? Like, get yeah, out of here, not, man. man, dude. Mayweather, this is you know what. I hate to get off subject, and I don't know if I brought this up when we had that massive discussion about Mayweather and Pacquiao a few episodes back. I friggin' hate that guy, and I hate the sport of boxing strictly because there is no, there's no sportsmanship there. No. Those dudes and their promoters pick and choose who they're going to fight. You know, this is, this is some people's problem with the UFC, is that they feel like, yeah, the UFC is the most recognized mixed martial arts fighting organization, but are they the best? Right. And are the best truly fighting the best? And in most cases, no, they're not. Which is the same thing with boxing. If that guy had any guts at all, he would fight an opponent that he wasn't 100% sure he could beat. The only person, and this is a conversation came up in the car yesterday, I said, the only person that I would actually pay, I wouldn't stream it, I wouldn't go to somebody's house unless I was chipping in on it, but I would actually pay money 
if the boxing commission looked at Mike Tyson and said, we're going to give you a one fight suspension, you know, we're going to re- renew your, your license to fight for one fight against Mayweather. That would be the only one because Tyson strikes me as the kind of guy that would agree to it and say, yes, I'm going to do everything you tell me. And they look at Tyson and says, you got to whoop Mayweather's But at the end, we're going to give it to Mayweather. He's going to go because we all know boxing's fixed. And Tyson's like, yeah, yeah, sure, okay, I'm going to play ball. And then he gets the money, and somewhere mid-match, he's like, you know what? No, nah, I'm whooping this dude's and because it's only one match. Tyson Tyson bit somebody's ear off. Do you really think he's going to sit there and play by the rules? And somebody tells him, no, this is how it's going to be. Tyson's like, okay, take the check, and then whoop Mayweather's What's going to happen? He's only got a one-match thing. It's for real. You know? And then Mayweather would truly, truly get the beating he deserves. Because Tyson, I feel, is the only guy... A, that can do it, and B, they wouldn't give a damn about the consequences. Seriously. And he has, in fact, called Mayweather out before, yeah. too. Yeah. That's it. So, that's my thoughts on that. Moving on. <laughs> uh, tag Team Championship match. The primetime players defeat Big E and Xavier Woods. Now, I don't remember how we called this. We both said it was going to be New Day. Because we felt like they were going to continue to build the rivalry. Yes. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, very. They just gave it up. Very. Yeah, I was amazed, man. I was really, I was impressed. I mean, I knew, I felt that they, they were going to give it to the primetime players at some point. I just didn't know it was going to be a money in the bank. Right. Now the question for me is, is, uh, and we also had discussed what we thought them losing and that this could cause like a, a fluctuation in New Day and possibly split the group up. That's obviously not happening as was shown on Raw mm-hmm. the following day. Um, good match. Glad the primetime players got it. Um, how long are they going to hold it for? I don't know. We'll, we'll I, get a rematch at Battleground. I would like to see... Uh, I'm, I'm really hoping for Tyson Kidd to be able to come back and him and Cesaro would get another run at it because I thought they were a good tag team. Well, from what I've been reading, it doesn't look like Tyson's kid coming back anytime soon. No? No. You know, Brett, Brett Hart blames that on Samoa Joe. Yeah. But that's a, a discussion for another time. Okay. So, uh, moving on for the final match of the night, the World Heavyweight title uh, ladder match, Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose, as we knew it was going to happen. So. What? I didn't like the finish. A match. I didn't like the finish. No? Cheesy. Have them both fall down with the belt. Yeah. You know, and no. Nah. Yeah, it was the cheap way of, like, we don't want... First of all, dude, ladder matches kind of suck. They do now. Like, I... Yeah, back in the day, when it was, like, TLC matches, and it was the Dudley Boys and the Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian, those dudes delivered, man. Yeah. They delivered. Yeah. Ladder matches now are just too tame. But this was one of those things where, like... I, th- I still feel like we could see Dean Ambrose as the World Heavyweight Champion at some point. And them doing, them going out and pulling it the way they did, I feel like gives more credibility to my feeling on that. You know, I'm looking at it now as like when Lesnar was the champion, we were all upset because he was never, um, uh, what do you call it? Present? Yeah, and it's just like, well, you can't really be the big champion if you're not present, blah, blah, blah. But now that the belt is there and it's always being defended and now you have more opportunity, okay, Dean Ambrose could be champion. Okay, Sheamus could be champion. It's like it goes back to what it used to be. Now I actually miss Lesnar being champion. Really? Yeah. Because when Lesnar had defended that belt, it was the big fight feel. Absolutely. Now now what? It's just like, okay, once again, it's being defended at every pay-per-view and Joe Schmo can come out and get it. You know, it's like it doesn't feel the same anymore. Give it back to Lesnar for a while. It's, it's, that could very well happen, man. That could very well happen. The only way, the only way I feel like Dean Ambrose walks out of uh, Battleground with that title is with an assist from Roman Reigns, which sounds odd. Are they, who's fighting at Battleground for the belt? Did they announce that yet? Yeah. It's Lesnar, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say though. about Monday. No, yeah. it's not a three-way. Which, now, some of the fallout from this pay-per-view that was on, I mean, we've mentioned some things, but one of the coolest things just in our final closing here that I thought was really creepy 
was this whole Bray Wyatt thing. I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, he came out, I think right in the opening, Roman Reigns came out. Maybe it was at some point during Raw, I'm not sure if it was right in the beginning, he came out and could like wanted to confront Bray Wyatt on um, Bray Wyatt coming out and screwing him out of the money in the bank. And Bray Wyatt popped up on the screen and did his creepy Bray Wyatt thing. Yeah. And then he had a picture from that, the, that the commercial, father's. the father's commercial, with him and his daughter having tea. Yeah. Which I've and, actually seen that on buses in Chicago. Oh, have you? Yeah, it's been plastered on the side super, of buses. Super, super creepy, dude. Like, it, it had that old, it had like an old eerie feeling of like how The Undertaker was back in the day when he was doing weird Yeah. You know, I, I um, Justin Labar was mentioning how, uh, I guess certain people were upset about that. Like, they took the angle too far by doing that and all this stuff. It's like, well, you want realism in a business that is all predetermined. So they try to bring that into the story. Like obviously, Roman Reigns knew they were going to show up the photo. And, you know, this is stuff that's predetermined. This is like, well, do you want it to be cookie cutter or do you want right. it to push it a little bit? And yeah, now they're pushing yeah. it and people are complaining, right. like, yeah. no, it's kind of too far. Right. I think Every- it's cool. If it's going to elevate that and then make that feud a little bit more personal, you're like, you know what, dude, oh, no. Yeah. Because as parents, we can probably we can mm-hmm. relate, not probably, but we can relate to that. And like, you know what, man, I'm beefing with somebody, and they pull up a, a picture of my kid. No, now, now I really want to kick your butt, you know. So I, I'm, I'd be more intrigued in watching a Roman Reigns Bay Wyatt now, knowing that Roman Reigns is fired up for a whole different reason. Yeah, totally. You know, no, it it, it brings it brings that that rivalry to a new level. Yeah, and a more understandable and viable level than. Oh, Bray Wyatt just showed up and screwed Roman Reigns. Right, right. Without any kind of... Re- so, and, and then the fact that, like... I mean, people complaining that it's, like, went too far. I mean, if you said it's on, like, the pictures on buses in Chicago... Yeah. Then, I mean, it's not like he got a personal photo or something. Right, right. You know, I thought I saw that and was like, oh, they just took a clip off that. I didn't know it was on buses and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was really cool, man. And then I liked uh, Seth Rollins, dude, all about, like, I'm going to... You know, I'm Seth Rollins, and I stood on my own, and I'm going to continue to stand on my own. And he's totally... Di- Seth Rollins is doing what I've been complaining about him not doing. And what I wanted to see out of a champion was a champion that could stand on his own two feet as a heel. Mm-hmm. And then he totally looked like a bee when, at the end of the night, Triple H and Stephanie came out and announced his new opponent, whose opponent was going to be for Battleground. And that's when we got the shock and the surprise that it was going to be Brock Lesnar. And when he came out, Brock Lesnar came out in the ring, Seth Rollins would not look him in the face. He looked scared, just, just, man, like, terrified. Nice. Like, cowering, like... Yeah. And then Brock Lesnar stepped up in his face, and he stepped back. And every step back he would take, Brock Lesnar would take a step forward until Seth Rollins was just out of the ring. Nice. And then he comes up on SmackDown and talks about how, like, you know, I'm going to take him out and I'm Seth Rollins. And it's just like, man, you weren't looking that way. You were looking pretty chicken sh- Monday night, man. Right. That looks like it's going to be a good pay-per-view. I'm excited for it. Um, unfortunately, you know, I, I, I was like, I feel like we're going to be 100% in the company line. And I think we fell to our average of about 50%. Quick, uh, quick final note here. China. Took a picture in front of the uh, WWE headquarters logo recently. Really? Yeah. And then uh, she's uh, starting. She's trying to get fans to support her and tweet. You know, China for Hall of Fame 2016 and um, all this stuff. And she's also starting now a, a campaign for, for people to fund her. Um, I forgot exactly what the hell the reason is. So I probably shouldn't have even brought it up. But yeah, she's asking the fans for money for some reason. Yeah, that's not. Oh, good. it's a fun documentary about her. That's what it is. Oh. And she was on. I. I forgot whose radio show not too long ago, and she was throwing out the rape at, uh, allegations at Sean Waltman. So he phoned in, while she was there, and yeah. they were going at it back and forth on the air. Wow, I'm gonna have to find audio of that. Listen to it. I want to say it was either the Opie. Opie and Andy show. Opie and Anthony. Anthony, OA. yeah. 
I want to say. I don't know. Was. How could she say that he raped her? Weren't they like the, together? Yeah, exactly. Like they made that and one she night would, in China. He she would say that it was uh, uh, that he would slide stuff in her, slip stuff in her drinks and all this stuff. And he was like, "Dude, we were both hammered most of the time. Like, where are you getting this from? You know." It's like don't. That's something serious. You can't accuse somebody of rape. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, you're going to have to find audio of that. But, I mean, there's so much more that happened in the wrestling world this week, but we'll leave it at that. Um, for everything Comics Remix, find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, at Comics Remix. Brian, Alex, and Junior at ComicsRemix.com, our separate emails. Questions, comments, concerns, get at us there. Click the petition link down below and sign, share, do it. Please. We all want to um, see CM Punk get punked. Pretty much. Oh, and check out Lucha Underground. This week, an hour-long match. Prince Puma, Johnny Mundo Mundo. for the belt. Awesome match. Uh, Mundo looked like he was going to take it early on. Mm -hmm. Ended up, uh, it was 4-1 to almost the entire match. And then Prince Puma scored a couple, and then uh, Alberto Del Rio came out at the end, messed Mundo up, and gave Prince Puma that that final win for the victory. And also, in Ring of Honor, they had their pay-per-view this past week. Mm -hmm. Jay Lethal has defeated Jay Briscoe and is now the Ring of Honor Heavyweight Champion. And who knows what TNA happened in TNA because ain't no one here watching it. <laughs> That's the show. Join us back here next week where we maybe might be joined by the book. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, until then, everything wrestling, we are the lockup. Oh, <laughs> wow, we didn't do that. <laughs> uh, it's cool. <laughs> see you next week. Later.